Welcome to Wasatch Weekends for our one hour Saturday edition here on October 21st. I'm your host, Ben Roof. On today's show, we've got some nutrition advice from a local nutrition expert. We're also talking to a children's book author, a new reality TV show, and we're also checking in with a local artist. But first, a quick local announcement. The seventh annual Shot Ski is happening this afternoon on Main Street, and Park City is looking to break the world record for the most shots taken at once of 1,350 people that was set by Breckenridge this past December. The event is currently sold out, but if you are interested in participating and haven't managed to get your spot yet, all of the spots that aren't filled 30 minutes before the event will be sold the minute of. So if you're looking to participate, make sure to head over to Main Street at 2 p.m. today to get your spot if you haven't already secured one for the 7th Annual Shot Ski. Now, let's take a quick look at the weather for today's event. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. anti-inflammatory foods. They help your body stay healthy. They fight against disease. Of course, fatty fishes are perfect, a perfect anti-inflammatory food. And salmon is one of the healthiest things that you can eat. So we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in our pan. People get nervous about cooking fish, but I'm gonna tell you something. It's super easy. The key is buy a good piece of fish and don't overcook it and season it. Remember, we're talking about zucchini fritters again. We we're talking about how you have to season things nicely. Like, look at how much seasoning I'm gonna put on this. I'm going to definitely cover it with a lot of salt and pepper. And I'm also going to get like all these little pieces right here. Like, don't forget about that. Whenever I'm grilling steak or something like that, I make sure I get all the edges. The skin is still on it. So what we're gonna do right now is put this flesh side down in the pan. Wait, 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 wait. My pan needs to be a little hotter. So I'm just gonna make sure my olive oil is all in there. I wanna hear a sizzle when I put it in the pan. And uh, look at that though, that's a nice piece of fish. Now what they say when you are looking for fish, when you're buying it, you wanna find a piece of fish that doesn't smell like fish. So if you walk up and you're like, ew, that stinks, don't buy it. You also wanna make sure it has a nice flesh. Like see how that's really firm? That's what you want. Okay, we've got a little bit of a warm, uh, warmer pan here. So I'm gonna put that fish um, right down like that, skin side up. We will flip it over. It will not take very long. I put a cold piece of fish in a warm pan, so I'm gonna turn the pan up just a little tiny bit. We are gonna make an orange avocado blueberry salsa to go on top of the salmon. So see how I'm just pulling that off? Ah, it could ripen up another day, but we're using it today. So this is how you do it. You cut around the pit, the seed in the middle, and then you cut like this. This is the perfect way to peel an avocado. And this is how you get most of the nutritional value. You peel it like a banana, right? How many times have you like tried to scoop it out with a spoon and it just hasn't worked out? This is how you do that. You peel this like a banana and then we have a nice avocado. So, and look, I like the firmness of this. If I was making avocado toast, I would be disappointed that it was that firm. But since we're putting it in a salsa, I like it. Okay, so we're just cutting those up into nice little pieces, the kind of the same size as the blueberries. So I'm gonna get those in my, in my bowl for salsa. The fish is cooking up nicely. I can hear it kind of sizzling, which is what you want. I'm gonna put a bunch of just whole blueberries. And like I said, blueberries are so good right now and so good for you. So we're gonna put equal amounts of blueberries and avocado in there. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper, you know, cause I love my salt and pepper. Gotta have it on everything. I really like spice, so we are putting some jalapeno in there. We'll mince this up really small. Depending on how spicy you want it, take the seeds out if you don't want it that spicy. Keep the seeds in if you do want it spicy. A lot of people claim that if you roast your jalapeno first, then it's going to be even more spicy. And you know what, I kind of believe it because I like really like to roast those. Okay, that's too much. We're gonna do about one part. So two parts blueberries, two parts uh, avocado, one part zucchini. And of course, we'll have the real recipe because nobody likes it when I tell them parts. <laughs> and then we're gonna add some orange. Orange and salmon go so nicely together. I'm gonna put a little bit of the orange juice right in there because why waste that delicious juice? And then I'm going to segment this orange. So when you segment an orange, you just do a lot of this, get everything out of there. This is a good orange. I'm kind of surprised though, because oranges are usually a winter, a winter uh, time fruit, but this one is juicy and delicious and smells really good. Okay, and then we're gonna segment it like that. So we're gonna do that all the way around just to keep the membrane out. This is a delicate way to enjoy an orange. All right, moving on over here. Got to get the orange off my hands. If you're flipping your fish or your steak or anything that you're cooking in your pan or on your grill and it doesn't want to flip, it's like stuck a little, give it another minute. You want all those juices. Oh, this, this one's ready. See that? There we go. And it's starting to cook. I can see that it's still pretty firm. We're gonna cook it skin side down now because that is gonna make the skin cook and then it'll easily come off. All right, so we've got some orange in there and some jalapeno, some blueberries, starting to get a little messy over here, some blueberries and um, some avocado. Now I'm gonna put a little mint in there. This is actually the only plant that I grow. <laughs> All right, so we'll put a little mint in there. We've got a little bit of the juice from the orange in there. And now I'm gonna add a little more salt and pepper. I know I added some before, but I'm adding a little more. And then I'm gonna add a slight, just a tiny bit of rice wine vinegar, just to give it that acidic flavor, taking it off the heat, skin side down. Now that's a sockeye salmon. So there's different kinds of salmon. So you get king salmon, sockeye salmon, coho, and pink. Most of the time we get sockeye. Sockeye is a delicious fish as well. And it's red, it's from the Copper River in Alaska. And that river is like 300 miles long and these fish have to swim upstream forever. So they're big, they're meaty, they're delicious, and they're really healthy for you. High in omega-3s and good food for anti-inflammatory eating. And then there's coho, and coho you can find as well, and that's kind of like sockeye coho is just a little bit below that, but it's still very delicious. Okay, there we go, we have our salmon. See, this is how I do it. I like just kind of touch it, see how it's firm like that. That means it's nice and done. Sockeye salmon with anti-inflammatory salsa on it. Go out there, cook, eat healthy, and enjoy yourself. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. In his first year at the helm of Cowman's basketball, head coach Mark Madsen is tasked with revitalizing a program that hasn't had a winning season in seven years. Now, Madsen has shown that he's capable of putting together winning teams from his time at Utah Valley, but will that experience help him at a Pac-12 school? Today we're introducing our new coach, who's an educator and a leader. First year head coach of Cal Men's Basketball, Mark Madsen, is already hard at work. The Golden Bears are coming off their worst season in program history, but Madsen hints the pain in Berkeley might be over. And, you know, you look at our personnel, I think we're the team that a lot of people don't want to play this coming year. Other coaches, they, they, they can see what we've done, they can see the personnel, they can see the players, and other teams are not going to want to play us. It's no secret Madsen is capable of transforming a program. He turned a Utah Valley team into conference champs in just four years. But does this mean he can do the same in a major conference? You took Utah Valley to new heights over your time there. How do you think that will help prepare you, rebrand this struggling Cal program? Well, over the course of the four years at Utah Valley, you know, there was growth and improvement every single year. And 
you, you, we had some great successes. You, you, we had some tough losses along the way. And it's almost, you almost learn more fr from a tough loss than, than you do from a great win. Because there's that pain. You feel that pain. And then you, you look at what went wrong. It, you, you relive it. You watch the tape. And then you say to yourself, okay, this is never going to happen again. Madsen will get some help this season as he's reunited with former Utah Valley forward Fardos Amak. Amak is coming off a season at Texas Tech where he only played 11 games due to injury. But Madsen says entering a new year, the 6'11 star is healthy. The year at Texas Tech last year was, an, was kind of an aberration year because of all the injury, because of adversity he went through. But he has been fantastic with the team. He's been fantastic in practices. And he's going to have an extremely strong year this year in the Pac-12. Madsen and AMAC will travel back to Utah once this season to take on the Utes in Salt Lake. Cal will be on the hunt for their first win over the University of Utah in that matchup since 2021. So get this, last season Cal men's basketball only won three games. If they win four this year, they'll already be out doing last season. But after listening to Matson talk at Pac-12 Media Week in Vegas, I think his expectations are a little higher than that. Make sure to stay with us, more coming up. Welcome back to Wasatch Weekends. As we're starting to close in on the holidays, I imagine some of us are starting to think a little bit about what we're putting on the table. So we've got Emily Davis joining us to give some great tips on how to make our holiday meals a little bit more nutritious. Let's take a look. Welcome back. Right now I'm here once again in our kitchen with Emily Davis of Whole Essentials Nutrition. She is cooking more healthy, delicious food for us with the holiday in mind. Emily, how are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm excited to dig in. This looks and smells delicious and we haven't even started. <laughs> it's probably the herbs that you're smelling. So yeah, today I thought I would share with you um, a healthified version of some of our Thanksgiving or holiday favorites. So today I'm doing uh, like a paleo style stuffing. Um, paleo meaning that it doesn't include bread. So that's what I'm sharing well, today. I'm excited about that since I can't eat bread. So let's get to it. Although sometimes that's the part that we crave and we want. Yes, and, and I think, you know, like the conversation I have with a lot of my clients, I, I do work with a lot of people who need for various reasons to eliminate certain foods, bread and gluten being one of them, um, depending on how you react. Um, if it's that once a year thing that you love and want to have, then have some, right? I mean, you all know your, your body's best, um, but yeah, it, ma make that decision. But, but I think as a whole, my thought is like, we, we can make that day a little better. Um, hopefully get people feeling a little better after the meal um, while still having really delicious food. You know, you make an excellent point because we do, if it's something that you just don't eat because you're trying to be healthier, then maybe you can make something like this, still get all the flavor and the enjoyment and maybe splurge on something else. Absolutely. Or if it makes you feel bad, you can just enjoy the holiday a little better and not have some of the issues that maybe you've had in the past if you've indulged in some of these. I, I think so. Yeah, I, again, like you, you all know, um, you know, your body's best, but, but I think um, we, we can definitely just feel better by like making some adjustments. So yes, this recipe is, dairy-free, gluten-free, uh, happens to also be nut-free and soy-free, and I mean, lots of things, um, while focusing and including on some really delicious and flavorful foods. So we're not skimping in any way, no, I guess is what I'm saying. No, but ideal for your holiday table. So yeah. where do we start? So I have um, prepped ahead um, um, the recipe that I was using called for um, butternut squash. Um, I used sweet potato instead um, because when I was shopping for this last night, um, I was looking for a convenient way to get the recipe started and I wanted something in the produce section um, that was already uh, peeled and chopped and they didn't have any butternut squash, they had sweet potato, so that's what I did. So in other words, like it doesn't really matter. You can substitute um, like the starch that we're using uh, for a couple of different things. So you're gonna roast, um, start with that and roast. And I've 
I've already done that, that step. Looks beautiful. So it looks yeah, very they got a they got a little too close to the element last that's night in the I oven, like but that's okay. <laughs> Do you add a little bit of oil before you roast yeah, it? Yeah, so um, all I did, um, like I said, I, I got these in the produce section. Um, if you're looking for just a really convenient way to get this started, um, already cubed and peeled, you're just gonna put about a tablespoon of olive oil with a little bit of salt and pepper, that's it. And then roast on a baking sheet for about, somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes is what I did. So. so. And, and really, like, once you get that started, then you could do this. And so altogether, this recipe would take about 30, 40 minutes. It, it'll really come together pretty quickly. I the longest is chopping everything. Yeah, yeah. So the other ingredients, just to kind of go over what I've brought. So sweet potato or squash, whatever you choose. Um, I'm using um, a pork sausage. And you could use a chicken. You could use a turkey sausage. The important thing to me is that um, there, there is an added sugar and added preservatives and lots of different things, and this one doesn't have those. And we've recently found a vegan sausage that we really like, mm -hmm. actually. Vegan sausage or keep it out, right? There, there are options, but today I'm using pork, um, and then we're gonna do celery, apple, um, some cranberries. Again, I'm looking for um, cranberries without any added sugar. It's hard to find, um, so look at the label. And then the herbs that I'm using, um, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And it, I, I prefer fresh herbs. Yes, you can get away with like just having these dried in your cabinet, because um, most people do have them, but it's gonna really enhance the flavor by using fresh. Which is always a good thing. Yeah, yeah, the nutrition, nutrition and flavor actually, you're really enhancing. Oh, and then onion, I don't think I mentioned that. So those are the ingredients, really pretty, easy to find. Um, I've mentioned a couple of different variations, so that's all we're doing. And so to start, I've turned on the heat and we're just sauteing. Um, I'm using avocado oil because it has a higher smoke point and I just need like about a tablespoon. So you're gonna turn on the heat and then add your oil, ideally. And you could use a different type of oil, but mm -hmm. you prefer the avocado oil. Um, I would, I stick to olive, avocado, or coconut. And so for this particular recipe, I would do olive or avocado, yeah. So then we're just gonna saute onion and celery together. We're gonna get that started for a couple minutes before we add the sausage. And just a couple minutes, that's all it needs. You don't need it to be especially soft or... So I'm, yeah, good question. So these are gonna uh, need to cook longest, and so that's why I'm starting with them. So a couple minutes until the onion is translucent, then I'm gonna add the pork, then I'm gonna add the apple and herbs because those things don't need to be cooked as long, if that makes sense. I always tend to overcook. I over roast, I over saute, <laughs> which can be a problem. Well, and then think like this is gonna then go in the oven. And so, yeah, we don't, we don't need to cook it more than a couple minutes just to kind of get it going. While that's cooking, I'm going to show you, um, so with the fresh herbs that we're gonna add later, thank you. So the thyme, you don't really need to do too much to the thyme, and I'm not you can kind of see this. Um, when the en at the end, when we're ready to add this, I'm just gonna pull them off of the... Because um, you don't want that thick stem, stem right? Right, you don't want the stem. So I'm just gonna, like with my fingers, I'll show you later, but I'm just gonna pull those off of the stem. That's, all, a, that's all you need to do with this. It's a, is it a problem if you do get some of the stem in there? I don't, I mean, you don't it's gonna want be to, crunchy. But, okay, mm -hmm. but that's it, it's not. Yeah, it's not terrible, you Hazardous. can eat it. Nope. And then the other two herbs, rosemary and sage, we're going to mince. And so with the sage, I'm gonna pull the leaf off. I need about a teaspoon of each is all. So I'm gonna take about two leaves and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in a second. Do you use a little more if you have dried? Or less? I would actually use 
um, you could get away with less fresh because it's going to be more potent. Okay. Yeah. So as always, depending on what flavor you like, how much you like something, you could use more or less, but start out with about a teaspoon. And then the same thing with um, the rosemary, I'm going to like pull it off of the stem, but then it's, it's a lot bigger than the thyme, and so I am going to cut it. So just so you know, that's kind of how so you... Just chop it a little bit so it's yeah. not so... Not, so, not such a big mouthful of rosemary. Okay, so this looks good to me. And I'm going to add the, the sausage. This has just paprika added to it. And like I said, I'm what I'm looking for is no added sugar. So do you read the ingredients on everything? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised, but that's important. <laughs> Most questions that people ask me, like I, I had someone who asked about, um, oh gosh, what was it? Um, ah, I can't remember. Just yesterday someone asked me about something and I said like a healthy product or something that sounds healthy to people but isn't always, like check the ingredients. You don't, you don't know. I. You made that point last time you were here, especially with gluten-free and gluten-free bread. Yeah. I had no idea. And yeah. now it's trying to find a better substitute. Yeah, so. yeah. lots of processed We're going to take a quick break and let the sausage cook. So make sure you don't go anywhere. You want to come back and see exactly how to assemble this delicious dish with Emily Davis. So we'll be right back after this. Welcome back. We are here with Emily Davis. Our sausage is cooked. We are making delicious stuffing for our holiday tables. So what do we need to do next? So the sausage is cooked. That really just took maybe eight minutes or so. And then we're going to add the apple and herbs because um, just a reminder that those don't need to cook very long at all. And so that's your, your final step before you put everything together. So. Um, I've just, this was a pretty big apple. I've just used half of it. You could use more, but you can just kind of see I've, I've chopped it up. Um, what you know. type of apple? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Um, this happens to be a honey crisp, but yeah, the short answer is it doesn't matter. Um, I think the honey crisp are a little bit more flavorful and sweet, and I definitely do like the contrast of the salty and fatty and sweet, so that's just my preference. Um, but so we're just going to add it to the sausage and yeah, it looks to me. It looks like that's plenty. I, I wouldn't do more um, Like I said, that's just half the apple and then the herbs You can kind of see I've just minced um, The rosemary and sage and then we're going to add in the thyme just from um, From I don't know what to call it. Off, off the stem. I don't. I don't need to cut that one. I don't know how to say it. It smells. Your dishes always have such great aroma. It's really the the fresh herbs are really going to do that for you. So, these. I mean, these are affordable. You can find them almost anywhere. Um, they're not hard to use. So, like I was saying before, the time I'm just with my fingers going to pull them off and they're small enough that I don't need to mince them like I did the others. About a teaspoon. <laughs> that's it, you just pull them off? That's it, yeah. So I'm just, that's how I'm using those fresh herbs. And again, I'm just gonna. So this doesn't need to cook very long because once again, you're putting it in the oven and you've already cooked the sausage. Exactly, yep. So apples and herbs go in the very last step. We're not really cooking more than a minute or so, just to kind of incorporate. And then the last step, um, like I said, I've already roasted the, um, I'm using sweet potato, and so I'm gonna add it. Go ahead and add that in. Oh, just dump this in there. Yeah. I was gonna do it the other way around. And you could, honestly, it probably doesn't matter, but this will incorporate maybe a little better. And then the other thing I would say is, um, we're, we're gonna put this in the oven, and if you're using an oven safe skillet like I am here today, then you can just keep it here, right? Then you're gonna put this directly in the oven for about 30 minutes. If you don't have an oven safe skillet, 
cook it like we've been doing, and then you're gonna put it into a baking dish. So I just, I brought both so that you could see a couple of options. So I'm just gonna incorporate this. Um, and then the only other ingredient, it is optional, um, but if you like your stuffing to kind of hold together a little bit more, um, more than what you see here, then you would add an egg at the very end. And so that's going to help um, the mixture kind of. So be more of a stuffing, traditional bread stuffing yeah, consistency? Yeah, exactly. And if you're using the egg, then it's going to need to be about 30 minutes in the oven if you're not using the egg. We've already kind of pre-cooked this. It's only gonna need about 15 minutes in the oven. So know that that's gonna be different. So if you don't use the egg, it's just gonna be more like what you see here. Just exactly. a little bit more, not mm -hmm. as together. Yep, exactly. And just, just cause I can't really show you that whole process, I'm not going to add the egg, but that this is when you would do it. You would just um, whisk it in a bowl um, together the, the egg whites and the yolk and then you would add it, not crack it on top, right? So that's what you would do. And then that's it. That's it. That's it. So really, I mean, this came together in about 30 minutes. It's really just a handful of ingredients. Oh, I lied. You'd add the cranberries. I almost forgot my cranberries. Is this something you can make ahead and put in the fridge or freezer? I think so. And then even like I prepped um, and roasted the veggies last night and I don't, I don't think that's gonna matter at all either. And so if you wanted to prep something the night before to make day of prep a little easier, then that's an option. Always important, and oven space too. Oven space, <laughs> that's nice exactly. This recipe is pretty adaptable for that. Exactly. So yeah, I mean this, this really is, I think, a, a great alternative, like we talked about, someone who needs to um, eliminate certain ingredients um, but still wants to feel part of, you know, the, the festivities. Like this would be something um, that would be great to bring to a family or a work gathering or something. Like that's, that's one tip I guess I always talk about with clients who ask me this is, um, you know, take, take control of that. Don't show up to a party empty handed and think like there's nothing for me to eat. Bring something and know that you can at the very least eat this, you know. And while you're cutting a lot of stuff you don't want, you're not cutting flavor. It's going to be delicious, and you might not even miss traditional stuffing. I don't think you will. I haven't I, tried it yet, but yeah, I, I don't think I don't sure think I'd will. miss it either. And and there's variations to, you know, lots of holiday favorites. Um, this just seems to be one that I get asked about a lot, and so I wanted to show um, an alternative. So, and you that's mentioned it. that it, this is playo, right? It's Paleo, yeah, paleo. yeah, meaning so paleo, kind of going to like paleolithic ancestors, the theory is just that we didn't have grains, and so it's not even just gluten, but someone following a paleo diet wouldn't be including any type of grain at all, so. And I know you have a certification in that as well. Yeah, I do, so I'm an autoimmune paleo coach, um, work with a lot of people with, yeah, autoimmune disease um, is one of my specialties, so. Which I'm sure is very helpful for many people, is that's a, yeah, a yeah. way that many people need to eat now. Yeah, and it's becoming, for lots of different reasons, a lot of people um, are being diagnosed with autoimmune diseases, so, yep. What else will you have on your holiday table? So this year, I actually plan a menu for um, a, a recovery center. I think I might have mentioned on here before, I planned their holiday menu, and we've got, there's a farm that I'm, uh, affiliated with locally um, and I'm gonna get the turkey from from the farm um, we're I'm probably gonna do this recipe so a paleo style stuffing we're gonna do some roasted veggies um, we're gonna do a mashed cauliflower versus a potato um, pumpkin panna cotta I think is what we're doing too so variations on some some favorites but definitely a healthier twist it all sounds delicious. Can we all come? <laughs> yes, you're all invited. <laughs> Where can we get more information about you, Emily, and everything you're doing? So probably my website is the best place, wholeessentialsnutrition.com. You can also find me on Instagram under that name. Um, but yeah, either place is probably a good place to start. 
Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Always yeah. appreciate you spending time with us in our kitchen. And this looks absolutely delicious. It's going to be on my table. So thanks for having me. Appreciate you being here. Yeah. All right. We'll be back with more right after this. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. Welcome back to the show. One of our favorite things here at Park City TV is making sure that we're sitting down a little bit to read and that lifelong practice and skill of reading is something that needs to be fostered at a young age. So Kimberly Perot had the opportunity to talk to the author of the new children's book, Etta Extraordinaire. Let's take a look. Now I'm excited about our next guest, the brand new children's book, Etta Extraordinaire. It is such an exciting book. I've got the authors joining me today, Rhoda Ahmed and Sharnay Gordon. Ladies, how are you? Great, thank you so much for having us. I'm loving we the book. We are extraordinary. <laughs> I love the energy. It looks like you guys are having so much fun this morning. So talk to me about Etta Extraordinaire. It was published today, so who would love to tell me a little bit about the premise of the book? Go ahead, Rhoda, you want to go? Yeah, so Etta Extraordinaire is uh, this beautiful little girl who does everything ordinary and extraordinary way, just like our, our, our kids, our daughters. So our daughters love dress up. They love, love leaving the house with boas and feathers and bracelets and gloves, and, and they were just larger than life. Uh, we used to say our daughter lived in her own Broadway show growing up, um, but we never found a book that where the character looked like them. So that's kind of how me and Charnay bonded, that we wanted to create a character-driven book. Um, and then we're mindful of the times we're living in right now that is uh, heavy times for being a kid and we just wanted to create something that gives a little light and love on every page. I love that. You know, I, as, a, as a child myself, I used to create and dream and do all of the fun Broadway plays and, and things that would entertain my family. Now, Sharnay, tell me a bit about the collaboration. So how did the two of you meet and what made you decide to collaborate on this delightful new children's book? Yes, absolutely. So Rhoda and I actually met on social media, on Instagram specifically, and we had both been following each other for years. I was a huge fan of her picture book, May Among the Stars. Uh, but I also knew that Rhoda has her own publishing company, High Tree Publishing. And I had this idea for a picture book and I shared it with her. And then we decided to create our own fictional character. We decided to name her Etta Extraordinaire. And as Rhoda said, we bonded over our daughters who loved to play dress up when they were younger. And that's really how the story came together. I, I love this story. Now, Rhoda, tell me, you mentioned your daughters. Both of you have mentioned your daughters at this point. But how did they collaborate? Did they give you influence and ideas? Did they tell you what they liked <laughs> as you went through the creative process? Yeah, I mean, really, we were, I mean, my daughter is in college now, so she, I was telling that she's in a different life space now that I, we were creating it. She was like, mom, whatever you want to do. And then I would pull all the pictures as inspiration while Charnay's daughter was very, very helpful. And she's like, no, yes. I don't like the stocking. Uh, the tutu dress should be a different color. Like she was our, I would say our A&R, our PR, our creative director. So she really was so there was so much love from her creating this. So I really appreciated that. Absolutely not. Yeah, sure. when when we got yeah, when we got the illustration, the cover illustrations from the illustrator who did the amazing illustrations in the book, she presented us with a few different cover ideas. 
And my daughter, she actually chose the cover for the book. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. So she's very invested in this process as well. It's a gorgeous book cover, by the way. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. So I was digging around and it looks like there are some fun activity resource guides. So how did you decide to make this book a little bit more interactive other than just reading it and seeing the beautiful pictures? Yeah, absolutely. So there are activity sheets that uh, are, you know, can go along with the book. There's fun stickers, but also we just wanted to make this a joyful experience for all of the readers who read the book. And that it was really, the book is really centered around joy. And that's really kind of how we, can, we came up with that. Absolutely. Well, you, the two of you emulate joy in just the conversation that we're having now. Now, Rhoda, tell us, where can we go for more information? Um, you know, what do you hope that fans get out of this book as well? Oh, great question, Kimberly. I hope that, you know, we are in a time where everyone's wondering, like, what we can do, how we can contribute, and we are of service to kids and storytelling. So I hope that people and parents and children still <laughs> love books and read but that sacred little moment when you're in bed and you have your kid then your arm around your kid and it's a silent moment of just reading and connecting and it might seem like an ordinary moment but it's an extraordinary one they're going to remember forever so our hope is that just do what you can with the love you have um, and if you, can, if you can find at Extraordinaire anywhere books are sold, um, support your local bookstore. We love local bookstores, uh, but yeah, that's our hope. Our hope is just adding more joy and light and love to the world right now. Well, it's an excellent book and I'm so excited to see how it impacts future generations and adults alike, because I was watching the trailer. It's just a beautiful story. Thank you ladies so much for bringing some additional joy to the world. We really appreciate you both. Aww, thank thank you. you, Kimberly. Welcome back. Life, love, and relationships can definitely be a bit of a challenge, especially if we're hiding our relationships from the people in our lives. Gretchen Pleshot had the opportunity to set, sit down with the hosts of Help, I'm in a Secret Relationship and their new season starting on MTV. Let's take a look. I am so excited. Uh, help, I'm in a secret relationship. I watched it all last night, MTV's amazing, amazing show. I It's a new episode, or a new, I should say, season, not episode, coming up. And we have Travis Mills and Ronnie Jones. I cannot wait to talk to you guys. I want to be the third friend in this friendship. How are you guys doing? We're excellent. Thank you for having us. Of course. We are great. You guys, I... You could absolutely be the third friend. <laughs> um, I really want to be. I have to be very honest with you guys. Last night, I binged watched two, uh, let's see, the first season, and I want, both of you guys have amazing energy. Your style is on point. I love the way that your energy, your style, your souls, you're just cool. I'm like, I want to be the third person in this. I'm, I'm making myself Thank the best you. friend with you guys, if that's cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So guys, this helps. Listen, on we'll oh, take guys. it. We're glad to have you. <laughs> oh, thanks. I like you guys already. So help I'm in a secret relationship. It made me a little nervous. The title made me a little like I get anxious. It made me a little nervous. I'm obsessed with the show. Obsessed. How did you guys get into this? How did it come to be? Give me all the background. I want to know. I mean, I think it's a testament to you know, an issue that a lot of people have, right? right? And that's in their relationship. Oftentimes we can want something to happen so bad. We can be in something that we, we are hoping is the perfect match, but there's these red flags that kind of pop up all around us. Yes. Whether, you know, it's not meeting friends, not meeting family, not being posted on social, just an element of secrecy in a relationship where something doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, as time goes on, nothing really changes and you have to resort to, to getting outside help. And I think that's where Ronnie and I come in and the fact that we're able to travel around the country and kind of lend our resources and expertise uh, is definitely something that, you know, we love doing and, and yeah. we're happy to do. And it just so happens to be filmed in 
airing on national television for the whole world to watch. Well, and I did want to say, um, I love that you guys, it's so obvious that you're coming from a beautiful place because so often that could come from a place of, you know, just that energy of like sneakiness, whatever, like vibing with that. But you can tell that you genuinely care about the people that you're helping, which I love that about you guys as well. Thank you. Of course. Thank I, you so much. Yes. I know, Ronnie, I want to hear from you. What were you going to say? <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, like, um, you know, these people are being vulnerable on both sides. The person right. that is that is has reached out for our help is being vulnerable, and the person who ultimately has to come clean with their truth is being vulnerable. And like Travis said, having the world watch is yeah. a lot. So it's yeah. easy to judge. It's easy to say, oh, it could never be me. Mm. But I think it's important to lead with empathy, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. A hundred percent. And now I think because, well, I don't think I know with all this social media, Instagram, every, you know, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on and on. It seems like, do you guys feel like it's more that people are more prone to be out there and find other people, you know, than like my parents have been married for 40 some odd years. I'm divorced. You know, do you think that's part of it is the social media world? I definitely think it has a huge impact on relationships. Right. Um, I think there's, you know, there's this element of the grass is always greener, right? Mm. If you get in a fight with, you know, the person that you're with, you can log on to social media and you can see 10 people who, you know, are liking your photo and it gives you this, this sense of like, oh, well, I can, if this doesn't work out, I can just go be with this person that or instant I can go be with this person. Yeah. A hundred percent. And there's a mm. dopamine hit that goes with that. Um, I think the most rewarding stories for Ronnie and I are, you know, people who, who are able to have an honest conversation and work through it because oftentimes more than not, the people that are doing the hiding, it's out of fear of abandonment, right? right. It's, yeah. it's feeling like if they were to tell the person that they're with the truth, they're going to be rejected. Mm. And when you kind of break down those barriers and you set the stage for an honest conversation to happen, you'd be surprised at what comes out in a beautiful way. Yeah, no, I feel that. That makes complete sense. And I do, you know, I like I said, I binge watched it last night. <laughs> And that's why I'm like, I, I told so many of my friends, I was like, these are my two new besties. I'm like, I love them. They're dope. But it is like some of the resolution that comes is really beautiful. Some does it. I don't want to go, you know, it's just, it's kind of, it's life. And I love that you guys are in it to help people. That's pretty cool. How did you two get linked up? I'm just wondering about this to do this. Well, Travis um, is is a pro at at the relationship show of it all, right? He had yes. a show on MTV, um, Ghosted, and right. I was a fan of that. And then, <laughs> you know, when MTV reached out for this opportunity, we Travis and I got connected. We had a test, and the chemistry was like there from the jump. Um, and then a couple weeks later, we were on the road filming our first season, and it felt just so natural. And I'm just so humbled and honored that I get to share this space with him and to to tell these stories. It's a it's a it's a it's a dream come true, truly. Well, and that's what right I was going to back gonna... at you, Ronnie. Oh, I love it. That's what I was going to say, because uh, Travis, you are in a band, correct? And then Ronnie, I know that you've done. Yes. OK, big shout out, because I also am a DJ and we play Machine Gun Kelly all the time. And I've heard you've opened for them. True story or for him. <laughs> Yeah, Which is yeah, awesome. 100%. Yes. And then, Ronnie, I know that you've been an actress and done all these other things. And I wondered if you guys had been best friends from, since high school or something, truly. And I'm not just because <laughs> your energy is so dope. Like you feel it and it feels so good. So that's so neat to see. Yeah, it's I not every day it. that you um, get to work with somebody that you consider a friend, right? So, yeah. like, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot right. of emotions long days, a lot of travel, right. um, but to be able to work with someone that you respect and admire is truly like otherworldly. I love it. All right, new season, guys. What can you tell us? I wish I could talk to you for like eight more minutes. But... <laughs> oh, I mean, we're, we're back. I think the episodes are bigger yeah. and juicier than ever, right? Like the... <laughs> <laughs> We've had to sit through some some extremely awkward conversations oh. where we're just kind of biting biting our lip, uh, holding each other, and 
I can't wait for people to tune in and see it. I can't wait to tune in and see it because, you know, it's one thing to be sitting there and, you know, have this like out of body, but I want to watch it back right. on the cameras. Uh, well, guys, you're amazing. Beautiful inside and out. I think we're going to have to do another interview. I have so many more questions, but thank you for your time and thanks for getting up early with us. Thanks for having us. It was a pleasure. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to hit you both up. I, this is not the last time we're talking, I swear. <laughs> thanks, guys. Right. Have I a great morning. To it. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. Welcome back to the show. One of our favorite subjects here for our local artists is the local wildlife. And Nicole Gayton stopped down to talk a little bit about her art with a local artist spotlight. Hi, I'm Nicole Gayton. I am an artist out of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and I am a very colorful wildlife artist. Here I am today, about 20 years later, uh, doing this full time. As a kid, I've always been really a big animal lover. Uh, that's part of the reason I paint wildlife. Growing up in Jackson Hole, my parents made it a huge part of our lives, getting out into the wilderness, hiking, having animals. Uh, we had two dogs growing up, a cat. Um, I was obsessed with horses and somehow I convinced my parents to buy me a horse and then a second horse and <laughs> we didn't have the space for horses but that was one of my first animals that I drew incessantly and then art and horses were my life and it's one of my favorite things to draw. My love of animals just grew and I am a big um, contributor to a lot of wildlife funds um, in Grand Teton National Park giving them a lot of uh, the funds that come from my paintings. So I get asked over and over again how I came up with this technique. And many people don't know that I use a squirt bottle similar to like a diner style ketchup bottle. I mix up black paint and water and then I lay my canvas on the ground and I go wild. You can see that it sprays out, all these little black marks come out. And I came up with that after being young. I was detail oriented, I would sketch out my drawing and I would never finish a project in my high school art classes until one day my teacher was like, you need to just like let loose, let it go. And we came up with this idea when we were working on painting projects to use a squirt bottle and that would help me complete my projects. So we tried it out and it was just like a magical experience how I could get a drawing done within like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Um, and that's how things kind of evolved into this really wild style for me. Ever since, you know, it's evolved and become this whole magical process. I think in the area that we live in, wildlife seems to be a very popular subject matter. I also really enjoy painting their personalities and their eyes, and it's been a really fun um, avenue to go down. I have decided to kind of experiment with some new color, um, some new subject matter. I typically only do one um, animal per piece and I've really kind of like challenged myself to put in more animals into one piece. So you'll see when we pan out here that I've done, you know, three foxes in one piece. I've done two bison in a piece. And then I have a really spectacular piece um, that is six feet long with I don't even know how many bears, but there are probably 15 bears in there. I would love you all to see that. So I ended up in Park City meeting Colby 
the owner of Pando Fine Art by contacting him probably five to 10 times over and over again, begging him to take my work. I know that hundreds of artists get in touch with him. And I think it was either, I can't remember the fifth or the 10th time that he finally responded, like it was the first time, oh, I've been watching your art and I really want you here. And he took a chance on me. I think I was in one gallery at the time in Jackson. And I came here on a Memorial Day weekend and I think five of the six pieces I brought down sold in the three days I was here. And so it was like a match made in heaven. And I have been here ever since. And I believe that was five years ago now. So it's like our fifth year anniversary and it's been really great ever since. Just being here in this gallery, the, the people that work here are so wonderful and incredible that, I mean, coming down, just making the trip is worth it. Come on down to Panda Fine Art to see my new work. It is right across from No Name Saloon and right next to the post office. Well, that's all the time we have for our special one-hour Saturday edition here on Wasatch Weekends. Don't forget to catch us tomorrow where we're going to be checking in with a new horror movie and getting some fantastic fall health tips. Until then, this is Wasatch Weekends, and I am Ben Roof. We'll see you next time.